Welcome to CNET and Tech Republic's Cracking Open, where we take apart the latest technology and show you what's inside. I'm Bill Detweiler, and as you can see, I'm wearing something on my head, and I'm here with uh, CNET's Aaron Carson. What do I have here, Aaron? What is this thing? This is an Oculus Go. What's unique of, about the Oculus Go? You know, we, it's a VR headset, obviously. Uh, what makes it cool, and why am I going to take it apart? Yeah, so you might have run into VR headsets in the past few years, but this one is different because everything, the processor, all the sensors, are contained within this. All right, so everything like the um, PlayStation VR, the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, uh, they have uh, cables, right, that connect them to either um, uh, PlayStation or a computer or and so this one's completely self-contained kind of like when you have the ones that you put your phone on like the samsung gear vr things like that but this one you don't need a phone for right and that's the exciting part okay you don't cool. need anything else to use this so that's why we thought it would be cool to take it apart right is to see what's inside this to see the hardware uh, that oculus put inside and to see how it how it works so We'll start, I guess there's this little foam thing here, kind of looks like a masquerade ball mask, right? You know, for a fancy ball. Um, it's kind of comfortable. You know, you tested this out a lot. What, what did you think while I'm taking this apart as far as the comfort goes compared to other ones? Yeah, so one thing that's been really nice over the years is that VR headsets are getting more and more comfortable. All right. um, you see this nice plush padding. This is not how it used to be. Okay. Uh, you know, once upon a time, you would have just sort of like a little a little rim of, of foam, and that was the best you could hope for. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing around with this for about a week or so, and it's been a good time so far, I have to say. And so we've taken the we've taken the cushion off, and it looks like inside here what we see is a bunch of standard Phillips screw. So that's nice. I like when uh, we don't have to have special screwdrivers to remove them. This is just a, a triple zero screwdriver. So it's pretty small. I mean, it comes in a specialty screwdriver set. Usually you may not find it at your average hardware store, but you can find them online everywhere, part of um, electronics tools. We're gonna keep uh, removing this. Actually, it might be a little easier. Let's take off the strap here. Now, what did you think about the comfort of the head strap compared to some of the other ones that you've used. It took a little finesse adjusting it, but something that I do like is you actually have the option of taking that top head strap okay. off just in case it's, it's too much or if you're like, you're really? lean, you have a lot of hair. Okay, so you, you can wear it with just, just the side strap. Just the side oh, strap. Okay. Yeah. And does it work as well like that? Does it stay on your head when you're using it? It does. Well? Okay. Yeah, you know, you can, you can kind of um, adjust the straps just by pulling and tightening on the sides or, or loosening. Okay. So you don't even really have to take it off to adjust. You can just be in the midst of doing whatever it is you want to do in VR and make sure that it, it fits comfortably. That's good. Good. That's really kind of cool. And it has a controller with it there, right? A it wireless does. controller. And how does that work? So this is basically just a standard controller. You've got a touchpad, you've got a trigger kind of on the bottom and a few buttons. Okay. Um, you know, not, not too much to write home about, but it is nice to have the option of having something in your hand. You can use the lanyard to make sure that you don't accidentally like fling the controller into a wall or something, which you would be surprised how often that, that happens. So we've also popped out these little plastic sort of eye rings. Uh, again, if you wear them, uh, they help the, um, the screen conform to your eyes here. And so, you know, I can look like uh, Jack Sparrow here with the... Uh, too much eye makeup on here. Um, now that we have those removed, it looks like, I think, and we have the screws removed, that we can pop uh, the outer shell uh, away from this and maybe lift off this back plastic piece here. It's fairly light. What did you think about the weight? I'm surprised how light it is. Well, that's a really kind of important uh, aspect of this is that some of the older VR headsets, like we were talking about, they were also heavier. And it just has this way of pulling down in your face. But this is one is, is a little easier to manage. You're still going to get the lines, like the red marks on okay. your face if you've you know had 
had the, the headset on for you know an hour or two, but it but yeah, you definitely don't have that feeling of like oh this is just pulling Way me down. down <laughs> okay, so we can kind of pop this loose. It, there's some plastic um, snaps that are in here. I want to try and do this pretty gingerly um, here. So I remove it. You know, whenever we're taking things apart, we always try to take things apart, not destroy them, uh, and in a way that we can put them back together. Um, and if there is a problem with this, it does look like, you know, if the battery, what, it, it has a battery in it, right? Yeah, okay, and you're gonna, you can charge it, and you're going to get about two, two and a half hours of, of uh, charge out of it. If the battery were to start to run down and not hold a charge or, you know, degrade over time, not hold a charge, it looks like it wouldn't be too difficult or out of the realm of possibility to take this thing apart and put a new battery in it. I'll see if I can turn this over here so we have the, this little plastic cover here uh, off. Now see if I can't, we can't get a shot inside there so we can see the two lenses uh, that uh, cover the screens that you put up to your eye. You can see uh, some, of the, uh, some of the other components still seem to be hidden behind this black plastic housing. Again, more Phillips screws inside. We're gonna keep uh, keep going. Ooh, and you were telling me something uh, before we started, and we can kind of start to see them inside the speakers, mm -hmm. right? So tell me a little bit about the speakers. The speakers are here on each side, here and here. Tell me a little bit about uh, those speakers and how they work. Yeah, so this is kind of a, a, a feature of this headset that I was particularly impressed with. Um, you have built-in speakers and the sound kind of comes through these hollow little yeah, these straps, straps on right? the side. And kind of like eyeglasses, like you have or a pair of glasses, right? Right. The part to go over your ears. Right. So, you know, you do have the option of using headphones, but in the time that I was using it, I really didn't feel like I had to. The sound okay. was pretty immersive and it's coming out right by your ears anyway. So. Cool. There's a lot more screws in here. So, you know, while I remove all the little screws, uh, tell us what your favorite experience was. What were some of the ones that really stood out to you? Yeah, so there's a ton. There's more than a thousand, they say, in the Oculus store. So there's a lot that's been out there for the past several years. You know, one that I found absolutely charming, and it's not new, but it's called Bait, and it's just, it's a fishing game. Okay. And it gives you all these really serene little lakes. One is kind of like a nice tropical island. The other one is sort of this like interesting swamp. And you can just kind of sit there with your, your VR headset on and, and fish and like cast the line and, and all that. And it's just like, it's weirdly soothing. Uh, <laughs> and then there's a, you know, there's another uh, free app that I was kind of checking out called Pet Lab. Okay. Which it, it almost feels like a little bit of a riff on the Harry Potter world where uh, you're in some kind of magical universe and you can create these little alien fuzz balls. They're not aliens, they're, they're just little monsters that are, that are very cute. The thing that we do find a lot is that a lot of these games and apps are cool and they're fun but don't necessarily have like a long shelf life. Okay. You might it's play them for like an hour or two. Yeah, like you might not play it like a third time or a fourth time. Right, okay. So. All right, once we go inside here, there are a lot of little screws that we can remove. And we, we have to say, if you went out in the online, um, there was actually, Palmer Lucky actually went out and posted a teardown of this a few weeks ago when it first came out. However, it didn't actually show how they took it apart. They just showed it all in pieces, which is pretty cool in and of itself. But, so we wanted to do this to show everybody how we can take it apart. So I've removed all of the screws that I can see inside here, except for the ones holding the speakers on the side of the housing here. And now I think I can't pull anything out this way. So I think what we need to do is flip it over here to the front and we're gonna try and pop loose some of the plastic tabs maybe uh, that are right here along the side. So hopefully we can do that um, and not break anything. Ah, there we go, yeah, this will pop loose now that we have the screws loose. We, and that's something we always try to do, you know, is put these, take these apart in a way that lets us put them back together and have them function. So sometimes that means, and I've never taken this apart before, um, and so that means kind of learning as we go and being um, gentle as we can and not sort of forcing things. Talk a little bit about the simulator sickness because I know you've done a lot of, uh, you've written a lot about that. 
what is simulator sickness? How does it affect people? I mean, it's kind of like, you know, if you've been to a 3D movie, what happens? But what does it really do here? Sure. So, you know, it's basically this idea that your brain and your body are kind of out of sync. You know, um, there's this thing called lag that's tied to low refresh rates, which is basically like you know, how many images you're, right. you're seeing in the, you know, a second or something. Um, and it's, it's really disconcerting if, for example, you turn your head and the world you're looking at doesn't come with you. And okay. so, so your brain interprets this odd disconnect as, as you have been poisoned. Right, there's, that's there's what you were wrong. telling me once. That yeah. it was, it's actually a response to you being poisoned. Ooh, and, and just that right, at just the right moment, we were able to pop loose uh, the front cover here which looks like it actually holds, and this is pretty interesting, uh, the heat sink. So remember when you were talking about the phones getting really hot? Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the heat sink for this is actually, because you can see these little, the little tube here, um, the, the heat sink, and you can see a little the thermal, um, you know, thermal, not paste these days, but thermal pads here that touch against the processors. We'll look at some of these chips a little bit later, but we can actually see that here um, to help prevent that from getting hot, right? Like you were talking about. All right, so inside here, we can see the main uh, circuit board here. We can also see some of these little um, foldable, flexible cables uh, that run from the circuit board back probably to the um, LCD displays that are behind that. So we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove the screws that hold the circuit board onto this plastic frame here and see if we can't get that out. There are a lot of screws in here. There are a lot of cables and connectors um, attached to the circuit board. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all of those very gently. Um, these uh, foldable flexible uh, or folding flexible cables uh, are really sort of thin. We don't want to damage those. Uh, we can see cables here for uh, the speakers. I, d I don't wanna damage those. I don't know if they will come out. Um, I think we have a connector here, maybe for the battery. Oh, actually, this is for the battery there. Um, actually, and we can remove, oh, there we go. Yeah, great. Uh, so these are little metal covers that are co covering up some of the other uh, connectors here. We're gonna put those to the side. Um, here we have a large battery cell, I believe. So let's see if this, we can pull this out. So you can see if I can separate it here. It's probably a little bit of adhesive in here. Usually they are, um, yeah, it's got a little adhesive, but- Can it, it be stubborn? Yeah, it's just a little bit, not too bad. There we go. So you can see the adhesive right here. Here we have, this is a lithium ion battery cell. And I think it is a, what is this? This is a pretty good size cell. It's a 2600 milliamp hour, 9.36 watt hour uh, battery. So it's a pretty good size battery, much bigger than a smartphone. Uh, much bigger uh, than you would find in a, um, you know, in a, usually in a portable device, maybe more so like a laptop or something like that. Um, with that out of there, and that comes out of the back here, um, ooh, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this cable here. These, this is an antenna cable. Um, it goes behind there. I'll go ahead and pop this loose from the system board. Again, being very careful here not to break it still let other people kind of see. There are these little catches. There we go. Now we have the antenna cable loose for the wireless uh, system. There's the wireless antenna here. And then we have another uh, antenna cable there. All right, so the only thing holding us in are, I think, the ca connector cable on the top, which I believe there's a little IR. It looks like there's a little IR sensor here that detects when it's actually attached to your head or on your head. Which is handy. Um, and so we're gonna disconnect that, being very gentle here again, using a pair of little ESD safe, um, electrostatic discharge safe uh, tweezers. We've got that done there. And now the only thing that we have connecting us are the speaker cables. And again, we're gonna try and be really careful. There we go, I got one connector pulled out. Really careful here. Pull that out, all right, boom. And we have it, so we have the circuit board uh, for the Oculus Go uh, VR. And then here we have attached this um, plastic inner frame right here. Uh, we also have the um, 
the LCD, the screens would be behind here. We'll see if we can't get those out in a minute. Um, and then uh, the lenses and the other plastic here. So it's very componentized, so I like that. Uh, the speakers, obviously we talked about, are here and here, and they go through these hollow tubes. We can kind of show this to the camera here. There are these holes in that we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, we'll see if we can't remove those too. But for now, I want to spend some time on the, uh, the circuit board and sort of look at some of the, uh, the chips that are actually on the circuit board here. I think, let's see if we can remove them. I don't know how many of these uh, shields we're going to be able to remove. We're going to try it if they're not soldered in place. That's always frustrating uh, when they're soldered in place and it makes it, you know, almost, it makes it difficult to remove them if not impossible without damaging the components. There's still a little bit of metal shielding, but we can see um, the, uh, a couple of the main chips. Uh, the Oculus, this is a, it comes in two uh, versions, right? Yes. This is a 64 gig uh, version, which is the storage. Um, it also comes in a 32? 32. Okay, and so uh, there's minimal price difference, I think, between the two, so if you're gonna get one, just, just get the 64 if you can find it. Um, uh, and the, you can see the storage chip right here. This looks like it's an SK Hynix chip um, for the 64 gig storage chip. You can also see uh, the processor uh, down here. Now this processor, it's actually a Snapdragon uh, 821 processor. So that was the same processor that was used in the first uh, Google Pixel phone. So it's kind of interesting bit of trivia there. Really interesting though, to see everything that's on the board here. Uh, now, does this have both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? Um, it does not have Bluetooth. Okay, actually. no Bluetooth. Okay, so it is Wi-Fi, um, no Bluetooth there. So let's see if we can't get a few more components out of this. Uh, so, so tell me a little bit about the future of uh, VR. I mean, where do we think we're going to be in one year? Where do we think we're going to be in five years? Is it going to be one of the sort of the dominant forms of gaming, of entertainment? It is just still so hard to say sometimes, you know, um, like we were talking a little bit, adoption can be tricky, you know, this is something that perhaps is really appealing for folks who are, you know, a little geekier, a little more technical, but, you know, it, it's kind of hard to get a grasp on how far we are from, say, like every household having a virtual reality headset. And I think part of that is, you know, we still really need to find that just dynamite use case for why you absolutely have to have virtual reality. Right. So it still needs a killer app. It does. All right. So with, we removed a couple of more, a uh, few more screws and we can now lift out what is the display assembly and the lenses here for the, uh, the displays. Um, I, I don't see a good way. Now, this is something we find inside these devices too. Um, I don't see a good way to actually remove the displays from this assembly. It appears that it could be that they, there is a way to get these apart. It could be physical connections. Um, I'll, ooh, okay, I'll try here. So yeah, we can lift, uh, we can separate that and we do see our display here. This would be the LCD screen um, and um, as opposed to two small screens, one large screen here. Um, and there are these small tabs uh, on either side right here. Um, and, and they're adhesive. They're, they're basically tabs attached to an adhesive that runs probably the perimeter of this or around certain parts of this. I could pull these out and I think the screen would come right out, the, or the LCD would come right out and have no problems. The problem is I, I'm not sure I could buy new adhesive that would match correctly to put it back in. Could I get some other adhesive to put it back in? Sure, I could do that, but I'm gonna leave it in there for now. There's nothing really to see on the other side of this except for the LCD. Um, and I wanna put this back together again. So um, we're gonna leave this intact. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our attention, we're running out of space on here. We're gonna turn our attention back to the frame here. Uh, and I'm gonna remove the two speakers so that we can see how they um, how they transmit the sound uh, through these little hollow tubes. Uh, and then we'll uh, be almost done. We can also see attached to this, these are the um, Wi-Fi antennas um, here on either side. So there's one here and there's one here. Um, and, and these are the speakers. Um, so, so I've removed the screws. It looks like these little plastic pieces connect on here. We're gonna see if I can pop it loose without breaking it. Um, and there we go. We can pop that loose right like that. And so we can kind of see the hollow, uh, this hollow tube here. And then we can see our little speakers uh, right like this, right here. 
Um, well, I think that about does it. I mean, there's not much else for us to really take apart uh, on the device. I think it's really cool uh, to see how they've managed to put everything into the headset. I mean, basically what they've done is, as opposed to taking your cell phone and sticking it on the front uh, of your uh, of a, just a set of goggles, a plastic headset, they've taken those same components and they've built them into the goggles and done it at a really affordable uh, price point. So that does it for this uh, edition of Cracking Open. Aaron, thank you for being here and sharing all your VR knowledge with us. Um, be sure to check out CNET's YouTube channel for all our Cracking Open shows and check out Tech Republic for a complete uh, teardown photo gallery and a list of all the hardware uh, inside the uh, Oculus Go VR. Thank you.